Typically, I would say finance is involved in all aspects of a company's operations, since pretty much every decision has financial implications. Hence, finance professionals have a good view of the entire business and can connect the dots across different functions. This has allowed forward-leaning finance professionals to get more engaged, I think, in the business and help operating leaders in critical decision-making and in leading and driving operations. I think that this is also the reason why uh, many finance professionals end up moving into general management roles over their career. You know, when you think about it, every leader is an operator for their function, whether their group, their department. So as an operator, a CFO's objective is to run an effective and efficient finance function, his or her department. And at the, end, and, and the center of that function are people. People are our most important assets. That's how we get things done. There's, yeah. there's only so much one can do by oneself, but when we leverage our teams, we can multiply the effect many times over. Hence, as an operator, people development has been a key priority of finance at all of my employers. Wherever, I, wherever I've been, Ford, Fleer, Piston, and now Women Ethics, it's, it's a task that's not just delegated to HR, but finance is responsible for people development. And talent development for the function is driven by the finance leadership team. We're focused on ensuring that we have you know, attracting the best talent, recruiting them properly, onboarding, training, teaching, developing, promoting, and then retaining the best talent. And that's one of the critical functions uh, to run an effective and efficient organization. So if you think about traditionally, this is sort of the classic core responsibility of finance. You know, what finance has traditionally been focused on, accounting, audit, control, tax type functions. And this is all about financial reporting, disclosures, and compliance. Uh, when you think about it, it's about protecting shareholder assets. All of these are definitely important functions and mandatory, as no other function or group in the company is responsible for these. However, I think that these are necessary, but not sufficient in today's environment to be a high-impact finance professional. So as capitalists, CFOs instill a financial mindset throughout all the levels of the organization. Mm -hmm. We teach and promote business acumen. Mm -hmm. We are driving the operating cycle. This includes monitoring the overall external environment for important global trends, political, economic, cultural, that could impact the company. Mm -hmm. It also includes conducting competitive research and analyzing consumer behavior for insights that can be leveraged. Mm -hmm. All of this I want to emphasize is an ongoing function for the Catalyst CFO. In addition, finance establishes targets and then works with the operations to deliver those targets. Are we best in class? If not, how do we get there? So we continually monitor and adjust as necessary to continue improving the business. As Catalyst, we also partner with operations to come up with a strategy to address any gaps. Here, analytics is our best friend. Data, if you think about it, is just the starting point. It mm -hmm. needs to be translated into analytics. In this case, you know, just presenting financial data like an income statement is not of much use. But trying to identify the variance drivers and the corresponding operating physicals helps pinpoint areas of opportunity. This analysis, I think, leads to you know, valuable insights, which then enables actions and better results. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, you know, as a catalyst, we're also going to encounter our share of resistance, at least initially, because change causes fear. Mm -hmm. And just to give you one, one example, at FLIR, we came up with the idea to increase our payment terms for our suppliers. Yeah. Initial response from purchasing was very skeptical. Their point was, which made sense, was that our suppliers would respond by raising prices. Okay. The counter is that, hey, look, our competitors were getting those terms, and we are a strong, loyal customer with a sound financial standing and investment grade rating. So why shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. We didn't give up because we believed in our cause and in each other. So we didn't stop advocating. Finally, we decided that we would contact our suppliers and pitch them the idea. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, the results were outstanding. Half of them 
were fine changing from 30 to 60 days. And so the lesson here is really very simple. You know, never give up and never say never, right? If, if yeah. you, you know, you've got to keep pushing. So, you know, another example of, you know, driving, you know, being a catalyst to drive change uh, was another example from FLIR around our compensation metrics. Mm-hmm. We knew that we needed to drive better returns on capital to improve overall shareholder value. We knew there were opportunities for better working capital management. So what we decided to do was add a return on invested capital and inventory returns to our compensation metrics for our leaders. Mm-hmm. This drove a significant change and increased focus with monthly operating meetings to drive you know, improved inventory, which resulted in significant reduction in the overall inventory and a much significant improvement in the overall inventory terms. So again, you know, people pay attention to what is measured, especially if it's going to drive personal, you know, direct personal reward. You know, as a strategist, a CFO is the right-hand partner of the CEO and the board to help define the vision of the future and then develop and drive the strategic direction of the company. The strategist CFO takes the lead in developing a vision for the future and a strategic plan to carry out that vision. To give you an example, in the case of Ford, when we were in South America, we called our strategy the South America Better Plan, and it was our roadmap for future growth. One example of what we decided to do in that was one thing that made South America challenging was that at that time, it was somewhere in between an emerging market with sort of cheap and cheerful low-end vehicles and a fully developed markets with you know, very high-end needs. So market research revealed that a segment of the consumers were willing to pay more for bells and whistles for technology mm-hmm. features. So yeah. based on this trend analysis, we began investing more in technology and higher-end features and scaling up our vehicles, which improved our overall brand perception, desirability, and then allowed us to sell vehicles at a premium, again, gain market share. Some of the other, you know, just examples as a strategist, if you think about is uh, in, a, in a high-tech company, strategy is all about capital allocation. And we can create significant value by allocating our capital to derive the best results mm-hmm. and the best returns. Uh, disruption is another key element of what can be used to really shake up the business. And it's something that CFOs can use to really drive a fundamental shift in the overall direction of the company. So at FLIR, several years ago, before I joined, 80% of our business came from the military, specifically thermal imagers that enabled you know, helicopters and fl- planes to conduct surveillance and other missions at night. The infrared technology was amazing, but FLIR was too dependent on one market. It was basically the, the, the defense side. So we wanted to disrupt the status quo. And one way of doing that was by identifying a new market opportunity and designing new technologies and products to serve new markets and customers. So we discovered that thermal technology that was used for long range surveillance by the military also had commercial applications. This led to the development of a lepton, which is a thermal imaging camera that is smaller than a dime. Wow. It fits inside a smartphone and other handhold devices and is 10 times less expensive than a traditional IR camera. This is about bringing thermal imaging technology to the masses, and mm-hmm. that's revolutionary, uh, or as I prefer to call it, disruptive. Wow. As a result, Fear became you know, a more diversified and balanced company, roughly 50% military and 50% commercial consumer, with thermal a- imaging applications in a variety of new verticals, including smartphones, traffic, drones, mobile accessories. So again, these are some examples of how, you know, disruption and strategy can, you know, be sort of, you know, a key part of what, what finance does.